Hello, good evening everyone. I hope that you can hear us, that you get a good signal this evening. At the moment, there is no community. Uh, just a quick update before we start the conversation about the Haggadah, Passover, and deconstruction, deconstruction of the Haggadah and the story of going out of Egypt. Before we start, I would like us to have a review of what is happening. At the moment, there is no communication with the server of the whiteboard, the concept board. So since there is no communication, we cannot use the whiteboard as a source for the text. So this is an open conversation about the Haggadah. If you have questions about the Haggadah, the Passover, this is the topic. I would like you to speak about Passover and the Haggadah from a non-regular uh, angle. Because usually when people, if they celebrate once Passover or at their homes or with friends or they're familiar with this or they heard about this, it is usually conceived as a holiday or a moment in which people sit with their families next to one table and they read the text of the Haggadah. And there is, in a way, a mitzvah, a good deed, which is called Vehigadeta Levincha, and you shall tell your son. Vehigadeta. Yeah. Vehigadeta Levincha. Now, people take this literally, and you shall tell your son, and if there's a son, Ben, so there's a father, the parents, and so, and in a way, what people made during the time, during the generation, is the story about themselves. In a way, they use this time of the year to emphasize their uh, standpoint as a parent, yes, as parents, and their children as their sons, because the people do not understand what the Haggadah speaks about. So, many people develop, in a way, a behavior against what is happening in Passover. And this is the truth. I don't know if how many people are willing to hear the truth about what is happening because we are four weeks from Passover this year. And there's a lot of glory and about this holiday. And later on, it is translated to other languages and cultures as Pascha and so. Easter but the thing is that this time of the year or this moment became an instrument for people to empower themselves because they don't know what is happening in the Ag Haggadah or in general so this moment of sitting with a family next to a table for four hours between eight o'clock in the evening until midnight became so unbearable that people are seeking a way out of this cage. Most of people are booking flights if they can to escape this moment. They don't want to have anything with this. Some people immigrate to other countries and they refuse to sit even with, with a friend or share a cup of coffee at this specific date or time of the year. They so burned out from what their homes or their family uh, or previous generations engraved with them. And there is a lot of rep repulsion People do not want to sit, they don't want to suffer. They don't want to 
to sit and read a text, if they read a text, and sometimes it's a very long meal and how, how much people can eat, you know. And there is no conversation about the truth because the, the source or the cause of celebrating Passover is a moment of truth. But since people are incapable of speaking the truth, it's became to be, become to be a family drama in private houses or there are discussions about what to eat and how many dishes to eat in what way to eat it and how to decorate the house and how to guess to get the best dressing which is possible because it's also an opening yes hello hello so it is an opening of a new season so people are really happy to get new fashion so what is happening along or around those tables is the following takes Either it's a family drama about what to eat, how to eat, who is cooking, where to do the shopping that prepares for the holiday, and who is in control of what, the food, the serving, the cleaning, the cooking, who will read the Haggadah, how shall it be read, if people will sing it with instruments or without instruments, and so on, and who will translate if there are guests or so. Hi, Felipe. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you, we're very happy to see you here. Yes, and there's so much combative. I remember I used to work once in an acoustic uh, firm they used to make furniture and also supply acoustic materials and the boss I mean the manager the high manager he was so let's say beaten yes from this holiday that each Passover before the holiday he used to book a flight to Switzerland yes to make a, a ski vacation or to go to one of the Greek islands just not to be here, just not to experience what people usually see as a holiday or as a tribal season. Yes, this is a tribal season. Yes, there is something. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes, there is a race when it finally people sit to the table supposed to read the Haggadah, the text, to discuss what is written there. Everybody's rushing the other, just read, read, read. Exodus from Exodus, yes. To Just not to be in the moment, yes? People are looking for exit. How not to be? How to be in the next moment at midnight when everybody is going home and I'm going to sit somewhere in a pub with my friends and have a moment to myself because it is too choking next to the family, because there's always a commanding, bring this, do this, did you, got, did you get married, do you have a boyfriend, do you have a girlfriend, how's the business, did you find a job, gossip on left and right, not to mention a game, a control, yes, games, who's controlling what, when in fact nobody controls anything, because nothing here is, by our control, yes, or our free will. This is part of what is happening, but not all. And here is a story from a friend that served with me in the army. We were serving for a couple of years, and people next to the reliefing, I don't know how to say this, uh, word in English before we finished or complete our service, people were already planning their trip abroad outside just to have some air outside of Israel. And there was a stream of us that planned their trip to east of Asia, to Hodu, Nepal, and Thailand. And one of the friends who really followed this way, 
they planned like uh, a trek next to the Himalaya. And it was April and Passover was coming and something in them told them to go back to Kathmandu because they felt they want to celebrate this holiday. And there was uh, one house or one home in Kathmandu that uh, offered open evening to each and every one who is asking to celebrate the Passover. And like in a miracle, told me this friend, many, many people came to this house and there was long table and she said that this is the best Passover she have ever experienced. Why? Because she could dine, have a dinner with people like her, yes, Israeli, who wanted to celebrate Passover, but with friends, with people they never met, with people they never knew. And she said it was the best Passover of her lives, of all of them, not just of her, but they were speaking about this famous Passover and each and each and one each and one of them had a similar experience, a very beautiful evening, but without the pressure of the family. And what is the story of Passover? In a way, people opposite the meaning of Passover during the generations, because the whole story of Passover is one thing. There is no sun. Though the theme of the Haggadah, this is very interesting because I don't have at the moment a whiteboard to prove it. The theme of the Haggadah, Vehigadeta Levincha, and you shall tell your son, or your daughter, your children. But the story is what? What to tell the children? That there are no children. What does it mean? That there isn't any son, and there isn't any father. And there isn't any time. And there isn't cause and effect. There is just one. This is, this is the, the message of the Passover. This is the message of the Haggadah. But since people cannot conceive the message, it becomes, And you shall tell your son, so if there's a son or a daughter, probably they are parents and they're commanding parents, like kings, and the children are basically their humble slaves. So, like Andre says before, so what is happening instead of, in a way, being, being present at the moment, of this freedom that there is no parent, there is no child, there is no time, there is no bondage, there's only liberty and freedom, everybody uses this time to enforce time, to enforce slavery, to enforce control, to enforce motherhood, to enforce fatherhood, to enforce family drama that is a consequence of fatherhood, motherhood, children, and what evolves around them. Yes? So this is why I call this uh, session Deconstruction, Deconstruction of the Haggadah. Because, and not just this, there are more stories, yes? One of them is... Um, um, most, let's say, I would say, appreciated sage. He, he wrote many books. He wrote Tal Talmud Eser Asfirot, the teaching of the Ten Spheres. So people really appreciate books, but one of the halachot or the, the way of, the, the, they cut like a way of behavior is that some people should not dine or have something to eat in another's family's house or relative because 
there might be a, su a suspicion that their uh, their the how do you say their house is not kosher enough or clean enough in other words they use the days of passover to seed to sow distrust in other people be because they are not clean enough they are not kosher enough and they use the days of the holiday to create animosity. So one can ask himself or herself what is the advantage of writing and reading those books if at in the moment there's a mistrust and there's one human being which is better than the other. So there's duality. One person is more kosher than the other. One person is cleaner than the other. So we have duality. So what is the meaning of learning the, the teachings of the ten spheres? What is the advantage of learning the Zohar? If people go out from the session with their pride flourishing if they think that they are better than others because there is no other there is no akhir other there's only one echad and so it goes there's always another family which is best or better than any other family. So what happens instead of going to freedom and to liberty and admit that there's only freedom and liberty, people uses this holiday to enforce tribalism, not just familism, but tribalism. And this is not the intention. Another common uh, mistake is to think about Passover as Judaism. In the time, if we go really to the bottom of it, Passover, historically, if we speak about the historical event, was celebrated to relieve the sons of Israel, B'nai Yisrael, B'nai Yisrael. Not the Jews. Everybody's mistaken. Jews is a much uh, more later addition, and it's also a mistake. Yes, we speak about the Hebrew. Joseph was considered to be Hebrew slave. Joseph, Hebrew. There are Hebrews in Egypt. The historical event. There are Bnei Israel, the sons of Israel, but no Jews. No Jews. Many rabbinical studies and rabbinical rabbis teaching the Jews, in, there is no concept of Jews in Egypt. There isn't. There are Hebrews in Egypt or sons of Israel in Egypt. All later, all what is people tell themselves, it just was added with time and misunderstanding. So... What did we learn? And I'm sure that most of people would not like to hear what we have to say. But this is the truth. So what did we learn? What is the source? So what is the message of the Haggadah, the story of going out of Egypt? That there is no sun. There is no sun. Because sun says there is time. So there is no sun. There is no father. There is no time between them. There is no cause and effect. There's only one. Therefore, the value of Pesach, yes, the value of Pesach is 148, one, skipping, yes? What are the sons of Israel? Yes, very good. The sons of Israel, Israel is the name, the parallel name for the tree of life, in a way for infinite. 
So the sons of Israel, those are the souls who are dipping in time. Yes, and they think that they, they who they are, yes? The sons of Israel, this is the, the persona, that the identity that we get in birth while being, uh, there's a birth and birth is happening in time. So this is the meaning of sons of Israel. Yes, like the first verse, of the book of Exodus, ve'ele shmot, and those are the names, ve'ele shmot, bnei Israel, sons of Israel, habaim mitzrayma, which are coming at the moment now to Egypt, to space and time. Yes, there's a birth. When there's a birth, there's a name. Yes, where the birth is occurring? In Egypt. There could not be any other birth, but in Egypt. Yes, so every soul is... Yes, is a son of Israel, correct and perfect. Every soul is a son of Israel. Yes. So, again, what did we learn about the Haggadah? There is no son, there is no father, there is no time. There aren't any condition whatsoever. There is no cause and effect. There's only one. Echad Eloheinu. Yes? Echad Eloheinu. Echad mi odea. This is, the, this is the song and this is the question. Echad mi odea. Yes? Yes. Yes, we are all trapped in Egypt, which is manifestation. Egypt is the meaning of manifestation. That's correct. Excellent. Echad ani yodea. Yeah? This is it. So, if you have questions, this is the time to ask. If don't, also, I would like to wish all of us a very good weekend. Shabbat Shalom. And if Venus or Kingsway later are hearing this broadcast, please if you can send us email with your questions because the last question that you asked on discord was not recorded as a text message yes so i i remember the chapters that you mentioned but I'm, i would like to be precise because i would like to create sessions around your questions thank you so much shalom shalom v'chag sameach